What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, back with another video, back with the main hunk himself, Dr. Eric Tones. How you doing? Hello. Co-founder of 3DMJ, 3D Muscle Journey. He does the damn thing. Recently, you are prepping for what uh, bodybuilding show is this of yours? I actually have five bodybuilding shows on the horizon. <laughs> Taking five shots. He's gonna get his pro card, and this is an interesting way, Eric, of framing it because a lot of people know you as that scientist online, like as a coach too. So you have a, you know experience coaching other individuals. But what a lot of people might not realize is that it's your passion for lifting that spurred you towards higher education. It's been a strange thing, the, the use of the term bro science, and I'll even say that I'm guilty using it. Yep. Because from the very start, everything has come from me being an athlete. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about like, oh, these pencil neck scientists, or they're pointing out this concept or this, honestly, most of the time false idea that the people in exercise science are divorced from exercise. Yes. Um, rather than them being someone who was a bodybuilder, a football player, a coach or something who went, I'm more curious about this than I can get, at least in the type of curiosity from being in the trenches as an athlete, coach, or even maybe just a young student and going, wow, I have a lot more questions after my bachelor's and my master's and I wanna take this even further. But to say that somehow I veered off in a different direction, it doesn't feel like what I've experienced. The way I'd phrase this is forget bro science. I would phrase you as a bro who loves science because too many people have that false dichotomy between, oh, there's the pencil next there and their ivory tower. What do they know? If I'm so jacked and you say, I don't know what I'm talking about, how is that possible? And if anyone's listened to our podcast, Iron Culture, where we have a lot of scientists on there, the vast majority do the damn thing, love it, and are extremely passionate about lifting, which is why they got into it in the first place. And they want the exact same thing you do, which is the most amount of results. Eric is competing in five bodybuilding shows. The man wants to win, and science is a tool to assist with that. I even have an issue with this video to some degree, <laughs> because we're talking about sure. bro science versus science and the misconceptions that this group has against that group. But the root of the problem is that we're actually viewing them as opposing forces sure. rather than, I wouldn't even just say complementary, but different questions. They've served different roles. Uh, and there are many other roles too. So exercise science or nutrition science is specifically designed to answer questions that we literally can't answer in the gym. So to say like, ah, this worked for me, bro, but the science, it doesn't seem to match that experience. Well, why do you think we recruited 30 people? It's because we're trying to get a large enough sample size to make a generalizable statement that's true on average, but baked into that knowledge, we know that it should be wrong for a fair number of people. Now, the issue on the scientists is you have to communicate that well. Yes. And one thing that we've gotten better at with the whole evidence-based community is communicating what it means to be evidence-based and that it is not just relying on science, but understanding the role of science as being complementary to the personal preferences of the athlete or their experience and then also your experience as a coach. What spurred us towards this video, the concept, like I was reading some of the comments from uh, my collab with Shadow 2 Milo Wolf about length and partials, how it may be in certain scenarios, superior for hypertrophy. But they said once again, who's this pencil neck? Where it almost becomes the de facto argument against someone and I want to kind of reverse it back for a second because we did mention 3DMJ and we mentioned your journey. I think that would serve as a good proxy to understanding why people do this, why they endeavor to you know, enter academia and uh, research it. You were a lifter lifter at heart and this is an avenue that you chose. So you were once again a bro that then decided to do science. Why? I'm an incredibly competitive person. Yeah. And I've actually had to temper that for my own personal mental health. Like if people want to know like my rebound post contest, the injuries I've given myself, uh, the issues with food I gave myself early on, uh, they all speak to the fact that I'm at the core an obsessed athlete. I didn't understand how science was supposed to inform me. I was just like, look, I'm going to read all the magazines. What do all the pros do? And then, okay, what do the exercise science to do? I want to turn over every single stone. And of course, if I, we've got decades of research, if there's something, something to be learned there, I'm going to learn it. And then getting into academia, I learned, oh, these, this acts answers a different question, serves a different role than the things I find out about myself and the things I learned from an experienced coach or a teacher. It was my desire to become a better athlete that drove me to academia. 
Yeah, and, and Eric, I think also to go on the other side where some people it's like, bro, it's not that complicated, just train, which I, you know, I think to myself, it, it's weird when someone will state that, that's perfectly fine if that is your goal, if that is your journey, that you just wanna train and you're perhaps satisfied with getting a certain level of result. I would say part of the problem would be some people that almost, uh, they're masquerading, they're PubMed ninjas. They are the hierarchy, they're at the top, they are the guru, they know everything. Anyone that challenges them is incorrect and they'll weaponize science then as a tool. The issue actually came from the quote unquote evidence-based community, which is 99.9% .9 of the time, not the scientists actually conducting the research. It is someone who misunderstood, just like I did, what the role of science was, and then just immediately swapped out, oh, I listen to what Mr. Olympia does with I do what PubMed says, and their conclusions apply to everyone equally all the time, and they are the holy grail. And it all of a sudden becomes a new 10 commandments. It's not what, insert your favorite influencer, Olympia, athlete, whatever. It's what does the research say? They're all doing you know, 10 plus sets because of a meta-analysis said so. They haven't actually experimented. They've replaced awareness, critical thinking, and they've replaced looking at their own history and thinking ahead with just shifting with the sands of PubMed, yep. which is insanity. And it's absolutely not what science is intending to do. Like for example, with the length and partial stuff, yep. there's a ton of IFBB Pro footage from the 2000s. Ronnie Coleman is a great example considering only one third of people want to listen to him instead of me. I think you should listen to Ronnie Coleman because <laughs> he figured out training for the Olympia in when I was graduating high school, he would do basically length and partials. Yep. You watch him do shoulder press, you watch him do dumbbell chest press, you watch him do squats. They're all length and partials, yep. but he applied it to everything based upon feel and based upon his experience. And I see people just dismiss everything that IFBB Pro does as, oh, it's genetics and drugs. Yep. And I think that is probably a really missed opportunity. And to take a PubMed study and apply it across an indiv individuals, yep. all the same, is a crazy cookie cutter program in disguise, right? But to take the experience of one unique individual and say everyone else should do that is a crazy cookie cutter in disguise, right? So both of those are problematic and it comes down to misunderstanding how anecdotes are used how experiences are used and how science is used. I think this is the fundamental question. So now that the pitchforks, they're down. They're like, okay, science, not bad. We all want the same goal, which is to be better in whatever capacity that is. And this is a tool. So for those that are more part of the general population watching these videos and they're like, okay, like maybe I can use some of this. How do they do it? Science serves two very important roles. It is when you don't have good data on your own personal history, your training logs, you're not sure what is and wasn't working for you. A really good idea is to use something in the range of the average response yeah. from the research because you don't have better information. And that is one role of science, is to give you an, the, the ability to start in the right ballpark, but then you have to adjust from there. The other utility of science is to have a better mechanistic understanding of why things work. So bros sometimes do figure out things well in advance of us understanding it mechanistically from a scientific perspective. I got better results when I did this. Why? And that's typically when you hear some things that you're like, eh, probably not, right? You yeah. know, sometimes it's much more important to, to focus on what did they experience rather than them trying to explain it or rationalize it. And the tool for rationalizing things is actually empirically testing it in the lab. And that's why we in the applied strength conditioning and nutrition field will often interview athletes or do surveys. And then that leads to the next experiment. And some things work out the way we thought, some things don't. And then we try something else. And eventually we understand, oh, it's actually the lengthened portion. That's why full range of motion training is effective. And then you see a monumental shift in the evidence-based community. Yep. And sure, bodybuilders are doing that prior, but could they actually tell you why? So that's where science comes into play, but literally everything else, and this is a shout out to the bros, that's you paying careful attention and taking good notes, ironically using what I would call the scientific method. Sure, yeah. And in controlled experiments, changing one variable, like, you know what? My quads aren't growing. Let me try, instead of doing squats, I'm gonna try doing this hack squat, and I'm gonna keep everything else the same, and what happened after X amount of time. That's not a study. You can't publish that in the Journal of Strength Conditioning Research, but that is the best way to figure out for a client or for you what works. And that is what fits in in addition to those two scientific uses to create a cohesive framework to make an athlete more effective over time. And that is bros that love science.
Where can people find you? You can find me sitting next to Omar anywhere. Even if it's across the globe mm -hmm. on Iron Culture. Eric. Omar. Mm -hmm. You can find me on the Mass Cast, which is also Iron Culture, where Omar's sitting there letting us do a lot of talking while he's checking Rascal Apparel sales. And you can also find me at 3dmusclejourney.com and on my Instagram at Helms3DMJ. Also, the upcoming, I want to say, TikTok, I understand you're trying to make a, a move into that. It's a bold move. I yes. did recently get on threads. You did get on threads. Was that automatic? Did they do it for you or you made the No, no, you have to You have to make the choice. You click the button. The button. Eric, it is always fantastic having you on the channel. A bro that loves science. All the links will be linked down below in the description. Let us know what further topics you would like to see because we're back posting regular content. If you like the video, you can like the damn video and I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next P. Oh, that's good. That was good. Jesus Oliveras is the incredible bulk. Sporting rascal jorts, he's big. He's angry. He's hungry. You think I can work in with you, buddy? Yeah, man, make it quick, dude, but you're not gonna like me when I'm hungry. The new limited edition Rascal Jorts come in Hulk Purple, Rust Red, and Dark Chocolate. It's time to get angry with Rascal Jorts. Release your bulk.